month now, but already it's not enough. They're going farther. DNC Deputy Chairman Keith Ellison is attacking the idea of borders themselves. In an interview today, Ellison claimed the U.S. border is, quote, an injustice. Why? Because it keeps people from freely entering this country. How will we fix this injustice? Well, Ellison proposes what he calls a global Marshall Plan. Taxpayer money, your money, sent to Mexico and other countries to make them richer. So if Ellison thinks that foreigners can freely come here while your money belongs to their home countries, the question is, how is America different from a colony? Huh. We're thinking about it. That's it for us tonight. Tune in every night at 8 to the show that's the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. Good night from Washington, a city in the grip of insanity. Sean Hannity from New York City right now. All right, Chuck, a great show, and thank you. Thanks. Welcome to Hannity. All right, the American left, the mainstream media, they will stop at nothing to malign the presidency of Donald J. Trump. Night after night, these attacks on the president and everybody who supports him, they're vicious, they're absurd, and at this point, it's psychotic. And right here on Hannity, we have been on to this game all along. We've been calling it out for years. And what you've witnessed in the last 48 hours is only the latest example of the left's anti-Trump echo chamber propaganda all in an attempt to hurt his presidency, delegitimize the election, and really undermine the vote of the American people. Now, in moments, we're going to expose all the political hacks who pretend to be so fair and unbiased, the so-called journalists. We'll show you also the media's best friends in the Democratic Party. They are playing politics with the safety and security of our country at the southern border. And the midterm elections are now fast approaching. The left, they have no plan to improve America. And by the way, they're in full gear trying to discredit your vote, your agenda, your beliefs, and your good economy. All right, stay tuned, buckle up. It's time for tonight's very important breaking news opening monologue. All right, tonight we're going to start with a Hannity history lesson. Way back in 2015, when Donald Trump, remember, descended from the escalator at Trump Tower, he announced his candidacy for the presidency of the United States. The so-called elites in this country, they were laughing in his face. They said it couldn't happen. Please, please run. And, of course, Trump went on to prove them all wrong. And despite the media's best efforts to trash then-candidate Trump, laugh at his agenda, he energized the American people. He won the Republican primary, went on to resoundingly defeat Hillary Clinton in the general election. This wasn't their plan. This was not supposed to happen. And on the election night, you may remember 2016, your corrupt mainstream media, America's holier than thou so-called journalists, they had a collective depression and meltdown all on television. You might remember. America is crying tonight. I'm not sure how much of America, but a very, very significant portion. And I mean literally crying. Yeah. This is a sadness. It is a, a mourning moment for, for those people. Uh, and it is, it is a moment filled with fear, fear, filled with fear. Our country is about to face some serious crises. And so, I mean, buckle up. Your country needs you. It's a pretty extraordinary thing to say. Uh, if you have a son in the Marine Corps and that you don't trust the commander in chief, the, the people in the military defend the Constitution. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. All right. From that point on, it's only gotten worse. They are hell bent on discrediting this pre presidency, your vote. The media turned into nothing but an anti-Trump nonstop echo chamber. And for them, every issue of the day is a full blown crisis, the smoking gun, a national embarrassment. They literally parrot each other in their talking points until the rhetoric reaches a fever pitch. Remember this freak out over the president's use of the word, well, whole. What was your reaction when you heard the president call, you know, African nations holes? It's not clear what he meant by whole countries. Are you shocked or surprised by this? I'm not surprised. In, in one way, I'm proud. I am a proud holder. No, we are not all created equal. At least not if you are born in, as the president put it, a whole country. The word house instead of whole, as in house countries, not whole countries. I guess he's a holer. Yeah, fake news, CNN now known as the whole network. 
They became so obsessed, we could have played that montage for a full hour or longer. And, of course, the media's echo chamber didn't stop there. They have been obsessed from day one, the day he came down the escalator. Many so-called news gatherers even widely speculating about and obsessing about the president's mental health. Watch this. President Trump's fitness for office is now the top story in the country. Reporters and some lawmakers are openly talking about the president's mental stability, his health, his competency. One of people closest to Donald Trump during the campaign saying he's got early stage of dementia. He repeats the same stories over and over again. His father had it and it's getting worse and not a single person who works for him doesn't know he has early signs of dementia. Can you assess the president's mental fitness for office? The president appeared to slur his words while giving an address. Um, did you look into what the cause of that might have been at all? Are you yeah. ruling out uh, things like early onset Alzheimer's? Are you looking at dementia-like symptoms? On what basis would you, and this is just a philosophical question, advise the cabinet that the president is unable to discharge his duties? They move from crisis to crisis. Hysteria, hysteria, hysteria. Then they move on to the next one. Then it became stormy, stormy, stormy all the time. Take a look. This could be the last nail in the coffin. Yeah. Stormy Daniels is causing stormy weather. Porn star Stormy Daniels claims President Trump broke the law, had her bullied. Does Stormy Daniels have the president's number? It sure seems that way. President Trump might have met his match uh, with Stormy Daniels. How is Stormy weathering this? Stormy speaks. We're hearing quite a bit from Stormy Daniels. Stormy, in her own words, isn't going anywhere. Stormy Daniels has a good lawyer. The porn star Stormy Daniels was telling the truth. Stormy Daniels is on a tear. Every second, every day, hysteria, crisis, crisis, hysteria. Just another way to trash the president and discredit we smelly Walmart people that cling to our gods, guns, Bibles, religion, and you know, we're all irredeemable deplorables. And of course, their favorite topic, when all else fails, let's go back to Russia, Russia, Russia. Almost two years of this nonsense. It's like a moth drawn to a flame. They cannot help themselves. The past 48 hours is one more example. Take a look. All right, and always, the media bolsters its rhetoric by trotting out pro-Obama, pro-Hillary Clinton, former deep state officials to trash Trump, all in an attempt to legitimize they, their hyperbole. And that includes the disgraced, fired FBI director, James Comey. Remember, he once said he doesn't watch this show or even really know who I am. He said that on his book tour. Well, we all know Jim Comey's a liar, and he said this in an interview with ABC7 in New York's Bill Ritter. And then, by the way, he attacked me and Tucker just yesterday, but I thought he never watched. And yesterday he tweeted, quote, this Republican Congress has proven incapable of fulfilling the founders' design that ambition must counteract ambition. Well, all who believe in this country's values must vote for Democrats this fall. Policy differences don't matter right now. History has its eyes on us. Yeah, Jim, we've been watching you. In other words, Republicans won't turn their backs on the leader of their party, President Trump. So it's time to vote all of them out because Jim Comey doesn't want the investigation to continue. We're going to have a full montage of all these high ranking former deep state officials trashing Trump later in the show. But why would he ever trust these political hacks in the intel community that abuse their power? It's first important to call out what is a blatant double standard. Despite what you see and hear from this bubble media echo chamber, President Trump and his peace through strength, Russia policy has been so incredibly tougher than that of Obama, who they worshipped and adored in the media. In an interview today, once again, the president reaffirming America's commitments to combat Russia's hostile actions. Watch this. You say you agree with U.S. intelligence that... Uh... Russia meddled in the election in 2016. Yeah, but, and I've said that before, Jeff. I have said that uh, numerous times before. And uh, I would say that that is true, yeah. But you haven't condemned Putin specifically. Do you hold him personally responsible? Well, I would, because he's in charge of the country, just like I consider myself to be responsible for things that happen in this country. So certainly, as the leader of a country, you would have to hold him responsible, yes. What would you say to him? Uh, very strong on the fact that we can't have meddling, we can't have any of that. Now, look, we're also living in a grown-up world. Will a strong statement, you know, 
President Obama supposedly made a strong statement. Nobody heard it. What they did hear is the statement he made to uh, Putin's very close friend. And that statement was not acceptable. Uh, didn't get very much play, relatively speaking, but that statement was not acceptable. But I let him know we can't have this. We're not going to have it. And that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, the president's right. Vladimir Putin is the hostile actor. Russia's a hostile regime. What you saw, by the way, is something he has said over and over again, although your media is acting like this is the first time. It's not the first time that he talked about their interference and their meddling. As a matter of fact, he has said it over and over again, if truth and facts matter. Take a look. As far as hacking, I think it was Russia, but I think we also get hacked by other countries and other people. And I can say that, you know, when, when we lost 22 million uh, names and everything else that was hacked recently, they didn't make a big deal out of that. That was something that was extraordinary. That was probably China. Uh, we had we have much hacking going on. Well, I think it was Russia, and I think it could have been other people in other countries. Uh, could have been a lot of people interfered. I think it was Russia, but I think it was probably other people and or countries. It was Russia, and I think it was probably others also. Well, the Russians had no impact on our votes whatsoever, uh, but certainly there was meddling, and probably there was meddling from other countries and maybe other individuals. Oh, you mean he said it all before? They never reported that. All right, look at his actions, by the way. Look at his policies in this particular case in dealing with Russia. I mean, just look at it. After taking office, President Trump authorized the lethal arms deal with Ukraine in order to deter Russia's aggressive actions in the region. Why didn't Obama do that? That's a move against the wishes of Vladimir. And compare that to Obama in 2009. He actually killed a plan that would have armed our Eastern European allies with missile defense systems. Could have prevented all of that. A move praised by Putin as correct and brave. He had no hysteria over Obama's relationship with Putin. I'll have more flexibility in my next term. First month in office, President Trump extended broad economic sanctions against Putin, against Russia. And more recently, he issued new stinging sanctions against multiple Putin-linked Russian oligarchs and companies. Compare that to the Obama administration's first year in office, where they embarrassingly, you know, tried to reset Russia relations with a big present and everything. Didn't work out. Take a look. I wanted to uh, present you with uh, a little gift, which represents what President Obama and Vice President Biden and I have been saying. And that is, we want to reset our relationship. And let's, do it, let's do it together. So we will do it together, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. You are Thank very you. welcome. We worked hard to get the right Russian word. Do you think you, we got it? You got it wrong. I got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a nuclear firing button. Where was the media's five alarm fire over that embarrassing love fest that never worked out, by the way? And don't forget when Obama did literally nothing to counter Putin's involvement in Syria. It was Donald Trump who launched airstrikes against the Assad regime, authorized a counterattack on Russian soldiers on the ground in Syria, resulting in hundreds of Russian casualties. Obama drew a red line, and then they crossed over it, and he did nothing. The media is hysterical over the president's, well, so-called friendly relationship with Putin. Compared to Obama's? Okay, and on last night's program, the great one, Mark Levin, put all of this hysteria into great perspective. It's worth repeating. Take a look. In 1945, at the Yalta Conference, Franklin Roosevelt sold out half of Europe to Stalin. He repeatedly praised Stalin. In 1961, JFK met with Khrushchev. JFK told a friend of his, that he was rolled over, that he came across weak, that it was pretty disastrous, his meeting with Khrushchev. In 1975, Gerald Ford in Helsinki with Brezhnev, 35 other countries, recognized, recognized the territorial sovereignty of the Soviet Union, which included the captive nations of Eastern Europe. In 1979, Jimmy Carter placed a big, wet kiss on Brezhnev's cheek in Vienna. 
So like we've been saying for months, since Donald Trump came down the escalator when he said he's running for president, what we're seeing from the left and their allies in the media is nothing more than a huge, massive, blatant political tactic. Now, this is especially true as we now gear up for the 2018 midterms. I've been telling you the Democratic Party, they have no plan no solutions to improve the country, to help the people of this country. Instead, their agenda is purely political. They just want their power back. They want their crumbs back, the tax cuts. They want to impeach Donald Trump, but don't say it. They want to keep Obamacare, keep your doctor plan and pay less. That didn't work out. They don't want Judge Kavanaugh to be confirmed to the Supreme Court. And of course, they want open borders. But their political tactics are all too blatant. No solutions. Recently, you have House Democrats even authorizing a bill to abolish ICE. They want to show just how in favor of open borders they really are. Even have top House Democrat Keith Ellison even claiming today that our borders create, quote, an injustice. Really? And the Democrats' new rising star in New York, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez, even vowed to occupy ICE offices and borders everywhere. I'm not making this up. Take a look. I believe the moral character of the United States is at stake. So for me, it wasn't a question of whether I should go down there. Uh, if we have to have a rapid response. And I think every day that we go on, especially a day when something that heinous happens, uh, we have to occupy all of it. We need to occupy every airport. We need to occupy every border. We need to occupy every ICE office until those kids are back with their parents, period. And meanwhile, earlier, so during a House resolution determining congressional support for ICE, well, 133 Democrats went all in Obama and just voted present. And as you can see, Democrats are happy to play politics with your border security. They don't want their actions written down on paper as official record. They know they're wrong. They know it's politically at odds with the American people, but they want to play politics because this is all about them getting their power back at all costs. Now, without a doubt, 2018 is now the single most important midterm election in our lifetime. Democrats, the media, their allies in the deep state, they're going to get more hysterical all in their continuing effort to delegitimize the president and your agenda and your vote and your support for the president. We know this game. It's too familiar, their tactics. We all know the truth. The United States is seeing the best GDP growth we've seen since before Obama. We now have historically low unemployment rates all across the board, 14 state records with women in the workforce, African-Americans, Hispanic Americans, literally the U.S. pulled out of the horrible Iranian deal that Obama got us in because of his weakness. Yeah, he's the only pro president to promise Jerusalem will be the capital of Israel and keep it. He's leading with peace through strength all over the world. The left wants to go back to what? The old days of weakness, appeasement, 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more in poverty. Really? We want to go back to doubling the debt? We want to go back to economic? The only president never to hit 3% GDP in his life? Are you kidding me? We now went from the lowest labor participation in history to the highest. I mean, with each passing day, this country is improving on all fronts. We know that the agenda is succeeding with or without the support of these elites in the media, these corrupt biased, abusively biased, hysterical reporters that are gender driven. This isn't news anymore. It's fake news. Here with reaction, Fox News contributor, investigative reporter, Sarah Carter, the author of Why We Fight, Fox News national security strategist, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. You know, add to that, Sarah, this is th their playbook. They, they have their five agenda items. And to get there, they're going to do what they always do with the support of the media. Republicans are racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic. Uh, they want dirty air, water. They want children to die. And they want to throw grandma over the cliff. So it's all the same thing. Nothing that's going to improve the lives of the American people. Here's my question. Does this shrill so-called fake news, well, it's not so-called, it is fake news, so-called news, does it does it win the day? Do they have an ability to sway the American people with these stories that they they gin up the way they do? I certainly think they affect 
the American public. They affect our discourse um, when they write these type of stories, when they produce these type of pieces that we know are false narratives uh, based on, you know, what the establishment wants out there. Sean, all you have to do is look at how James Comey, former FBI director James Comey, Brennan, put Hayden in there. These are establishment rhinos as well as people on the left that are working contrary to the American people and to the American agenda. Look at what Comey said today. He came out and said, well, if you don't vote Democrat, I mean, if you're if you're an American, you've got to vote Democrat. What kind of person says this? The FBI director should be ashamed of himself. He should be ashamed that he ran the bureau really culturally into the ground that agents have suffered because of the way he handled things. Director Brennan did the same thing, calling President Trump treasonous. It's, I mean, it's just false and on its face. But instead, yeah. Brennan is bordering sedition. So these are problems is that are true, becoming- Is it true, because I have sources telling me that Brennan was actually spreading the phony dossier. I have been in contact, and I wanted to let you know, I've been in contact with Brennan's people. I have spoken with them today. Uh, I was told that Brennan is standing by his word, that he did not know anything uh, about the contents mm -hmm. of the dossier until December uh, 2016. Now, he did hear about the dossier, according to people that I've spoken with, and I find it hard to believe that although reporters all over Washington, D.C., knew about this dossier, that the CIA, yeah, director the CIA director knew didn't. nothing about it. So um, I, I, I have so to sure. stick with what I've been told, but, but that's what I I think we're going to find today. a CIA director that is so radical and political now, Dr. Gorka, that he was radical and political during the campaign as well. And that becomes a big problem for him, doesn't it? I think Sarah's point, Sean, is incredibly important. Never, never in the history of the FBI has a director been fired for cause and then within a year he is making public statements about who Americans should vote for in the next election. Never before, ever since the CIA was created after World War II have we had a former CIA director make seditious statements and calling the president a traitor publicly. This is absolutely outrageous these people oh i think uh, he, should... I, I think he's feeling the heat oh i think he's yes. up to his eyeballs the more, the, the, in the all louder... this deep state garbage and i think the media the is just been played get... by him and his radical views voting communist has never left him yes well, this i is mean think of it 1976 90 you vote for the communist party in 1976 that's just 14 years after the Cuban Missile Crisis. All right, it's the word, height Sarah. of the Cold War. Yeah, Sarah, last word. Well, Sean, this is why it's so important that the oversight committees be allowed to continue conducting their investigation, that the Department of Justice turn over the documentation that was requested so that the American people actually know what happened here. This is extraordinarily dangerous to the republic and to our country and to the foundation our country is built on. We've got to know the truth. And the most important question, Sean, why did Crossfire Hurricane start? That's the most important ah. question. And who started it? He's All right, right, guys. Good question. When we come back, Congressman Steve Scalise has very strong feelings about all this. Also, Greg Jarrett and a lot more breaking news straight ahead. All right, so on Monday, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise took to Twitter to defend President Trump, and Congressman Scalise wrote President Donald Trump went into this meeting with Putin from a position of American strength to combat Russian aggression, but it's important to remember how Russia was allowed to get to this point. He then gave a timeline of all the Obama administration failures with Russia, starting with the reset. He joins us now, the House Majority Whip, Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise. Why don't you just go through this, because this is... I didn't want to put it in my Hannity history lesson because I thought you did a good job, but I did show Hillary with that silly reset button of hers. Yeah, and don't forget the cackle. Sean, great to be back with you. Uh, look, there were so many different things that Barack Obama did when he was president. Uh, you know, he mocked Mitt Romney in that 2012 debate, uh, saying, you know, the 80s want their foreign policy back when Romney said Russia's a big threat. Uh, the red line was probably one of those glaring uh, points where he truly did uh, go backward in terms of strength. Uh, when he literally put that red line and said, Syria, you know, 
you've got to do these things, don't gas your own people. And of course, uh, after Syria gassed their own people, he just sat back and let it go. When the Ukraine, I mean, you're talking about good friends of ours, uh, allies of America were being invaded. Uh, President Obama sat by and did nothing. And the Ukrainians, by the way, were asking the Obama administration, not for boots on the ground, but just for weapons to defend themselves. And he turned his back on them. President Trump, by the way, in contrast, gave the Ukrainians missiles, gave them the ability to stand up to Russia. President Trump has stood up to Russia on a number of fronts. Obviously, that was one, expelling diplomats. President Trump increased sanctions. He worked with us in Congress to increase sanctions against Russia. So there's a big contrast well, between it's just like, President it's Obama just, like just the ignoring this threat. Said many times, yeah, Russia did it. Yeah, they meddled. Yeah, they interfered. It's sort of like the left... If you're not backing up the Brinks truck and trying to bribe some type of despot or dictator, uh, if you're not making meaningless lines in the sand that you'd never have any intention of backing up, um, if you show a weakness and you appease, they like that. Well, Donald keep Trump in didn't mind, Sean. Yeah, keep in mind the meddling, the actual meddling in the election happened under President Obama's watch. Exactly. He was president. There's evidence that he knew some of that was Brennan? going on. He just didn't where do anything Clapper? because he yeah. thought Hillary was going to win. Uh, so you look at what President Trump has done. He's acknowledged there was meddling. We, by the way, and Chairman Nunes and his committee have done a great job. You've pointed out. Uh, but Devin Nunes and his committee showed there was meddling, but there was no collusion between either campaign. And the meddling didn't have anything to do to change the outcome of the election. We should still pursue it. And we are, uh, but the, the meddling itself actually happened under Barack Obama's watch. All right, Congressman, uh, glad we have a few strong Republicans there that are willing to actually tell truth and give a proper history. Thank you for being one of them. Here now with more reaction, the author of Yes, It's Out Monday, The Russian Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton Framed Donald Trump comes out Monday. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. <laughs> You know, one of the things that we're, we're watching here is a lot of these people that are most critical, the Comeys, the Brennans, and the, you know, sure. all these people, clappers that are now paid, you know, in their case, it all happened under their watch, didn't it? It did, absolutely. And, you know, th this notion that uh, President Trump has been soft on Putin and Russia is belied by the facts. He has increased debilitating sanctions against Russia and Putin fivefold in the short 18 months since he's taken office, far more than Obama did in eight years. Uh, he's targeted their energy industry, their defense industry, uh, his inner circle, Putin's inner circle, frozen assets, closed down diplomatic properties, uh, expelled numerous Russian diplomats. He is applying pressure but Greg, at but the right time against a military and strategic adversary. And at the same time, he sees the bigger picture. He's extending an olive branch to try to diffuse long-term tensions with an adversary that has nuclear weapons aimed at us. Clear Hillary Clinton, she committed felonies and set up Donald Trump, framed Donald Trump. Um, that whole Russian phony dossier she paid for, foreign national, funneled money, the literally the bulk of the FISA applications to spy <laughs> on the Trump campaign. That's all Russian lies. That's right. all that she paid for. The, why is the, how is it possible the media can feign such outrage here and ignore the biggest abuse of power and an attempt to literally impact a presidential election clearly against the will of the American people? Be because the media w were constant apologists for Hillary Clinton and they hate Donald Trump, their visceral uh, scorn and unabashed hatred is apparent for all to see every day. The great irony, as you point out, is that it was Hillary Clinton who was colluding with foreign nationals and paying money in a political campaign, which is a crime, yet she's not investigated. Trump didn't do that. And yet he is the subject yeah. of a dilating investigation to try to destroy his presidency. All right, the book's out Monday, Amazon.com, Hannity.com. Uh, Greg Jarrett, great work. This will be the defining book on the whole issue. We'll blow it right, lays it all out for the American people. Highly researched, footnoted. All right, still to come, the great Joe DeGeneva, Monica Crowley, and House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes says Democrats, uh, the DOJ is delaying, hoping the Democrats win, and then they won't have to tell us the truth. We'll get to that.
you to understand when you do consider the bosses of our intel agencies, not his intel, the ones before him. They've been out to destroy him since day one and since they left and since before he got elected and after he got elected. Watch what we mean. He is uh, aiding and abetting uh, our arch adversary and has failed, in my mind, uh, to live up to his constitutional obligations and responsibilities. What Mr. Trump did yesterday was to betray the women and men of the FBI, the CIA, NSA, and others, and to betray the American public. And that's why I use the term that this is nothing short of treasonous, because it is a betrayal of the nation. He is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. When do we see almost a shadow government come out and say, we cannot side with the government, whether it's the cabinet or the Senate? I think that's the big question. This president basically coddled uh, Mr. Putin, and it was clear that he was intimidated by that, uh, that situation. Uh, whether, whether the Russians have something on this president or not, uh, no one really knows. But the way he behaves, uh, there is a clear signal that the Russians have something on him. That's the scene where families were separated. Now look, I, I, I know we're not Nazi Germany, all right? But there is a commonality there and a fear on, on my part. Now that's not enough to make the point. Remember when Senator Chucky Schumer actually said, don't ever mess with the intel community, like never mess with them. Taking these Shots, this antagonism yep. is taunting to the intelligence Let me tell community. You, you take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. Mm -hmm. All right, here with Reaction, former U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva, conservative columnist, Monica Crowley. You know, I, I told you, Joe, a while back, when you say bad cops, that these were bad cops, because 99% of cops are good cops that do a lot of good, and that goes for the CIA, the intel community. Now I look at a guy like Brennan, happened on his watch, um, I think he probably knew all about the dossier. His involvement in this is gonna be very interesting. Do, I, do we so, really wanna live in a country where the Senate leader on the Democratic side says you better not ever say anything bad about the intel community, because no. they'll, they'll get you. Sean, I wanna talk about two people. We only have so much time, John Brennan, and Leon Panetta. John Brennan is a traitor, and I'll tell you why. He's the real traitor. What he did and what he has said recently about the president of the United States is despicable. He is personally responsible for the leaking of unmasked information. He was responsible for the sharing of false information to U.S. intelligence sources to get FISA warrants. He is personally responsible for the sharing of false information with American intelligence agencies. And he, I challenge him to a debate at the National Press Club for one hour, two hour, three hours about his role how about in on the this entire pre-election and hour, about Leon Panetta. Leon Panetta should be ashamed of himself after what he did in Benghazi when he kissed Hillary Clinton's fanny, refused to allow forces to come to the rescue of people, and now he says, he says that he thinks that the Russians may have something on the president to compromise him. Shame on Leon Panetta. May he rot in hell. Wow. Monica. From what I'm hearing, Sean, we're still in the early days of the investigation into the internal, domestic internal targeting of Donald Trump, his associates, and the campaign. These are early days, Sean, and what we may find out is that the root of all evil may have gone through James Comey, may have gone through James Clapper, may have gone through John Brennan, may have gone all the way up to Barack Obama, or all of the above. We don't know yet, but what we do know is that they were trying to inoculate these agencies like the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, by, by comments like Chuck Schumer saying, oh, they're sacrosanct. You cannot, you can't go after them. <laughs> well, th we're not supposed to be able to go after them because they're supposed to be above right, politics me, and this kind of corruption, and we now know they weren't. <laughs> Joe, th this conspiracy theory, th you're right. How dare they... You when bet. We just laid out all the evidence how much tougher Trump has been on Russia. Right. Than Vla Not even than close. Obama. And you know what? Well, you know what? There's another guy, Michael Hayden, the guy who never put his big boy pants on ever when he was DCI. You talk about a guy who, who kowtowed to Congress, couldn't handle the pressure. He looked for any political port in a storm. But when it comes to the worst, 
It's Brennan. When you go back and you look at everything that happened in 2016 and 2017, especially during the transition between the election and the inauguration, at the center of this conspiracy is John Brennan. John Brennan is a but thug. Wait a Let me ask he you is this. a liar and he is a traitor. If if they if they advance a phony conspiracy theory you about, bet. The pre about the president of the United States that has been tougher on Putin than Obama ever was. You bet. The damage, no, this is important, that he has something on Trump. You're really onto something that's very profound. The damage that they are doing to this country by doing so, and they irresponsibly throw out reckless conspiracies without any exactly. evidence. And, and you know what, Sean? Exactly, I mean, I think the, those Sean. are their preemptive strikes, but I think there's something else going on. When you look at the document delays and all of the legal stonewalling, DOJ, intelligence agencies, number one, they're trying to hide incriminating evidence. Right. Number two, they think they may very well win in November and Democrats might control the House and therefore they can permanently eliminate any evidence of their wrongdoing. And three, it may very well be that they are trying to run out the statute of limitations on the Clintons, on FBI wrongdoing, maybe a <laughs> wrongdoing on behalf of the intelligence agencies. You bet. They are no. trying to run out the clock so we won't be Absolutely. able to go after them and prosecute Devin Nunes yeah. is on and, next. And, he, and he's saying that. And you know who's going to help him do it? Rod Rosenstein. He's he, he uh, an evil man accompanied by an attorney general who is totally incompetent and asleep at the wheel. Uh, wow. Powerful. But think about this. CIA agents, Schumer saying, don't mess with them. They'll get you six ways you on bet. Sunday. This is not the United States trying to influence a presidential election, favoring somebody who committed felonies, keeping her in the game, then turning their sights on the other candidate, then using a phony Russian dossier. None of this is right. And if we don't fix it, we're beyond Venezuela. This is now propaganda Most that would rival Pravda in US history, and the Sean. former Soviet Union. All Most right, guys. Dangerous. Um, we'll have you both back. Important, important discussions we're having. When we come back, the House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes says, yeah, they're trying to run out the clock and hope the Democrats get elected. Seized at any time. And number two, why in the hell would you make this order in the first place? And then why would you keep renewing it? He's renewed it six different times, well after the danger has gone there. And third, trying to realize if, if a, a hurricane, as devastating as those two hurricanes were, if that ever justifies the denial of a civil liberty or the denial of a constitutional right. Yeah, why why not just that. ban free speech? People say inconvenient things during disasters. Why not put them in jail for that? Uh, it would seem consistent with what they're trying to do in here. Just, bec just because there is an emergency, and I'm not denying. I've been there. I know how devastating that hurricane was for the islands. That still does not justify what this appears to justify. And once again, we don't know if it's actually been used or implemented or if anything has been confiscated. That's part of the information we want. But then we do want to ask why you'd actually do this in the first place. And as I said, this, the territorial law that allows this to take place is very similar to what was ruled unconstitutional after Katrina. I covered Katrina. I was there. And that's exactly the moment when you need a gun, when lunatics are preying on the weak, which um, is what happens. That's one of the purposes of, of why the Second Amendment yes. is not about hunting, it's not about collection, it's an individual right of self-defense. Exactly. Mr. Chairman, thank you for coming on, and no, I hope you'll get you. to the bottom of it. Thanks. And we're going to send the letter out tonight. He'll be getting it. We're going to be looking into this. Amen. Thank you. Well, pro-gun activist is sitting in jail right now. The government is trying to deny her bail. She's accused of breaking the law by illegally promoting Russian interests in the United States. What were those interests? Who is this person? What laws did she allegedly break? A kind of mysterious story. We're going to try to answer the basic questions on that next. between President Trump and Vladimir Putin, the FBI arrested a woman called Maria Butina. She's a Russian citizen. She was a pro-gun activist. According to the government, she illegally worked to promote Russian interests in the United States. She's in jail. The government is trying to deny her bail. What did she do exactly? It's not clear from some of the stories. Byron New York writes for the Washington Examiner. He's been covering this one. He's an unusually crisp explainer of the facts. And so we asked him to tell. So I read this carefully. I'm not defending her. I have no idea if she's a good person or not. 
But from what I could tell, she didn't steal anything. She, I couldn't even understand what her agenda was. From the news stories, the Washington Post made it sound like she was trying to bring the U.S. and Russia closer together, and now she's in jail. What is her crime? This is a really mysterious case, very difficult to describe given what we know right now. But it appears that she was in, in touch with Russian intelligence agents. She was some sort of agent of Russia. She comes over here and appears to want to really insinuate herself into political organizations right? like the NRA, seeming to concentrate on conservative political uh, organizations. She had kind of a shtick. She said that she wanted to start a pro-gun, kind of a NRA-like uh, organization in Russia, as if you could have one of those. Uh, but it, it, a, a lot of American conservatives, some who met her, thought that was really cool. Oh, she's going to do this in Russia. That's great. Um, she, uh, according to the court papers, she had a close live-in relationship uh, with a man who was very connected in the NRA, former uh, Politico out of uh, South Dakota. Uh, the government says pretty clearly that she was doing that as part of her work. But is that the government's business or sex life? The somehow? big the question here is what she was doing. What was the point of this? And I well, what's the crime? I mean, I don't know. Before the <laughs> she's actually charged. What's interesting here is she's charged with uh, uh, representing a foreign country without registering, which has become kind of a hot crime. Really? Uh, so uh, just a quick off the yeah. top of your head calculation, of having lived in Washington for decades. How many people in this city are lobbying for foreign governments not registered under FARA? Uh, a, a huge number. A huge number. Like not hundreds, like thousands. Although a smaller number now in the post manifesto Good. I mean, era, look, I'm yeah. against lobbying for foreign governments, but, a lot but of I just think this is a yeah. weird story. No, th this is a weird story. And, and I have had people say to me, look, if the FBI had evidence that she was in touch with her Russian handlers handling over the nuclear codes, I mean, this she would not have been charged with this foreign registration. With this BS thing. charge. She would so, have this, real this is not a this is not serious like that and in cases like this do sometimes end with uh, the United States deporting the person and they can't come look back. if she did something wrong charge her with it yeah you know, I think anyway thank Very you so mysterious. much Byron New York great to see you Simona Maggianti Papadopoulos is the wife of George Papadopoulos he, last year he pleaded guilty to making false statements to the FBI she testified today to Democrats in the House Intel Committee in relation to the Russia investigation she voluntarily did that. She joins us now to tell us what happened. Mrs. Papadopoulos, thank you very much. Thank you for um, So the Democrats me. asked you to come and talk to them. What did they ask you? They asked me mostly my relationship with Mifsud, the Joseph Mifsud, the, the, right? the famous professor who yes, talked about gossip Malta. about um, emails on Hillary Clinton, and the London Center of International Law Practice I used to work for, which is, the let's say, the link between me and uh, the investigation as a witness, uh, mostly than me as a George wife. Uh, I explained to them that, uh, according to my knowledge, I shared all the information had about Mifsud, he could be definitely a foreign agent, but mostly uh, he um, has ties to Western intelligence, is uh, um, linked to Link Campus in Rome, which is notorious to be uh, to train uh, Western intelligence official. And so I invited them to dig also into these um, different aspects. We're more than a year into this. You're the wife of, of someone at the center of this case, if it is even a case. <laughs> Why did it take this long for them to talk to you? I have no idea. I have no idea. I know the investigation is also formally closed, uh, so I don't know why it took so long. I just know that I voluntarily um, attended the meeting because of, out of transparency and also to make some points because uh, George Rule has been misunderstood. Uh, we um, talk about George as a mastermind of the Russia Gate, which is completely ridiculous when we think is uh, uh, it just happened to meet someone who casually talked about uh, emails on Hillary Clinton and then um, he never did did anything with those emails. I mean, he never saw Are those emails. Are you worried? I mean, because here you have, quickly, Paul Manafort's doing, going to do a life sentence for tax evasion and not registering under FARA. I mean, are I'm you worried about getting caught up in this? I am uh, quite confident. I didn't contradict myself. I always say the truth. Uh, I uh, hope that um, I help uh, the truth to come out. Uh, and as I said, the George role is important to, to right. reveal major plot, but I don't, I'm not sure it's Russia collusion at all. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it. Ms. Papadopoulos, thank you very much. Thank you very Good much. You. The deputy chair of the Democratic National Committee says the very existence of borders is immoral. We'll tell you what he said specifically next.